Hi everyone, time has come. In the last months, I painted and recorded how I primed, airbrushed, made some heavy dust effects, applied some oil rendering, made the model pop with some selective pin washes, even I created some nice rust effects, and finally I covered the entire process of weathering tracks and wheels. So now it's time to finish this Tamiya Panzer IV in 135th scale once and for all. I can't waste more time, so let's grab the brushes and let's go for it. This is not Panzer and welcome to my hobby channel. Although previously I covered a big amount of the whole paint job, I still have to finish some super important weathering steps. First will be the lower areas of the running gear, and yes, for most vehicles these kind of areas are rarely visible, but in this type of German Panzers they have to be painted properly if you look for a realistic result. So moving to my workbench, I decided to create my own heavy matte mixture for representing that effect in the model itself. The main key of the matte product will be acrylic heavy gel medium. As this product is completely transparent, it will be necessary to add some color using matte tone pigments. For extra thickness and texturing, I added a small amount of plaster and some fine and medium sized sand. The resulting mix this time will be extremely thick and sticky, and as you can see, it is super cool and realistic. In the lower hole area, I just started applying it, especially in the gaps between the hull and the boogie's structure. For this process, I recommend you to use an old brush. In this case, I used this big and old one for this kind of matters. I applied the mud in all the recesses and gaps of the boogie's area, also trying at the same time to create some variety of effects, leaving more amount of mud here and there. The result once dry is very nice, even if you compare it with the natural contrast it makes with the dust coat applied a few videos ago. As there was no transition at all between the mud and dust effects, I decided to use some acrylic paint for blending both effects quickly. Using some diluted Iraqi sand and working fast because acrylics don't give me excessive time, I made some blending, applying the paint diluted in a 50% and later using some tap water for blending. It worked as a medium tone filter for smoothing the contrast. Acrylic behavior was not as smooth like oils or enamels in terms of flexibility, but allowed me to work super fast. For complementing the rest areas, I took some AK enamels and I made some heavy speckling. Speckling applied in some strategic areas does not only make nice dust effects, but also creates some interesting crispy texture effect which is super interesting in my opinion. Of course, the effect can be left like this, because it needs to be refined and detailed a bit using some enamel thinner for blending the effect or removing the heavy amounts of paint that I don't like. Finally, as everything won't be dry dust and mud effects, I used this sepia color mixed with a little bit of wet effects, which will make the sepia color even darker. First, for creating some contrast for the boogies and rivets, and second, for imitating some wet mud effect in some places. For the first application, I used very diluted sepia color, because I wanted it to run super smooth through the surface, and little by little I applied that muddy pin was all over the surface. Even the driver's pocket holding a structure will benefit of this work. And of course, the excess of oil effect can be removed if needed. I used this extra dark sepia color, for detailing these side caps of the hole. First I applied some contrast with a pin wash, and later I represented some streaking effect, starting first with some speckling and later blending it with some vertical brush strokes. This kind of effects will complement nicely the main mud and dust work, and the last step of this lower area will be to add some light speckling using the previous dark matte color. In this case I looked for a subtle effect that were visible but not too noticeable. When everything has been completed, you can see how much this area has been detailed and how the result was created as a whole piece. Ok, once all the parts of the running gear have been completed, it's time to glue them all. Maybe in other cases, I would have gone for a different approach. This time, simply, I felt I had to glue everything to continue weathering the model. This might give some more perspective view for finishing the kit as a whole. For plastic parts, Samia cement is the best option. This kind of glue just makes the process super easy, and the joint I get between parts is hard rock. For other type of accessories, if I can, I prefer to use some white glue. Using this kind of soft glues allows me to place each part exactly in its position, with some correction possibilities. Also, if I need to remove the piece, 
white glue doesn't damage the painted surface. Now moving to the main hall weathering, it's time to start with the front ammo. Some time ago, given a walk, I collected this sand bottle. In this case, I wanted to represent some heavy accumulations of dirt and some small sized rubble. Also, it could be a different effect from what I'm used to paint. Wondering about what type of product should I use for fixing the dirt, I bought in my local hobby shop this product from Ammo. And after making some tests in other materials and checking its behavior, I started applying it directly to the model with a fine brush. This is the way I come up for applying this liquid without flooding all the model surface, and it worked fine at the end. I just loaded the brush with a big amount of fixer, and it would extend by its own just when touching the model surface. I am very happy with the result, because it doesn't damage the surface, and also it doesn't leave any marks in the paint. And the most important, everything was completely fixed with no issues. To make sure this dirt coat was blended properly with the previous enamel dust coat, I used some dust enamel colors and I applied a heavy coat over the dirt. When dry, I blended the effect by removing the excess. This will create a nice dust paint layer, which works as a transition between the dust areas and the more weathered ones. These same dust enamels were used to apply some effects on the spare tracklings, and for extra detailing in this front area, I used some raw amber for contrasting a little bit all the recesses of the main plates. As it works as a pin wash for the weathered areas, it creates a deeper contrast feeling. So always, using some enamel thinner for blending, I removed the excess of the pin wash. Finishing the dust weathering, I applied some pigments here and there, especially in the turret ring of the hole. Applying the same dust color pigments that I used for the wheels, I represented some more heavy dirt accumulation in these inner areas. Later, with some dust enamel colors, I applied some heavy washes for creating some variety. Just check how that looks when the turret is placed in position. Finishing a model kit is a synonym of painting all the little detail. In this case, using different acrylic colors, I painted all the little parts. The antenna was first coated with black acrylic and later polished with some steel pigment. This workflow gets a super realistic metallic finish. Some red acrylic color for painting the lights of the rear area with a fine detail brush. And some more complex details such as the wooden support of the antenna were chipped using iraqi sand. I represented some exposed and chipped wood, just applying some small touches in the more exposed areas of the support. Another small detail, like the K emblem in the front area, I thought it was too white and not deteriorated enough for a tank which has been in combat for months. So it was also weathered again by applying some grey filters to it, to paint the wooden block for the jack. I tried to use a different painting approach. I'm used to paint wooden pieces for light to darker colors, and this time looking for a more desaturated result, I decided to start first with a dark base color. At the end, I was not really pleased with the result. I mean, it's not bad at all, but it's not one of my modeling preferences. All in all, I think I will leave it just like that. Using some orange and black colors, I painted the leather strap of the wooden block. This time, I first applied a very dark base and little by little added more amount of orange color until I painted the last contrasting highlights. Okay, so now all the dust effects and little details are finished. It's time to move to the last steps and to create some grime and dirtiness effects around the model. With these two dark oil colors mixed in different proportions, I will work some areas like the turret side hatches for the crew or the turret stowage bin. All these areas have a common thing. There are places super exposed to crew work during maintenance or some daily routines. In the case of the stowage bin, it can contain almost everything inside. So using the oil colors diluted with some enamel thinner, first I made some basic sketching of the grime effect, and later I partially blended the effect until I was happy with the result. This type of effects can be replicated not only in the main hatches. In an AFP model, there are plenty of suitable places for representing some interesting grime effects. In this case, the ventilator in the turret roof was another good target. 
there is a fact that I always reserve for the final step, the weathering of the engine deck area. Working and creating grime, grease and oil or fuel stains is not a super straightforward process. When I weather these parts, first I like to apply some speckling, in this case I used some black oil and raw amber. Speckling allows me to create some random pattern. Talking about engine decks means talking about big and ugly fuel stains. With these ready soil colors and some Europe earth pigment, I will represent some spilled fuel above some accumulated dirt. First, I apply some dry pigment where I want to create effect. Also, you can make some corrections if you need it. With some burnt umber color diluted with enamel thinner, I apply a wash for fixing it. Bitumen oil color has a glossy and thick finish which makes it amazingly useful for representing grease and oil effects. Leaving a small amount of bitumen oil around the cap in the center of the fuel stain will act as some spilled fuel is still fresh. I keep repeating this bitumen application until I get the result that I want. And finally, it can be complemented with some speckling and the same color. With the rest of the bitumen paint, this time I represent some fresh fluid stains using again the speckling technique but more controlled and looking for some selective marks. Now you can see the final look of the engine deck once weathering is completed. Last finishing touches like the machine gun have to be base coated and later with a mechanical pencil I polish it with graphite for representing a metallic finish. Also I don't forget about the coaxial machine gun, I keep representing this effect in some more exposed areas, some soft touches in the turret handles and of course the stowage pin. The commander cupola received a heavier application, almost polishing the whole ring. In the rear area I applied some smoke dry pigment to the exhaust hole, a super easy and quick smoke effect. Finally I glued some wire for holding the spare track links and yes, but at the end and with some patience and practice I managed to glue it correctly. The final step was to represent the rudimentary gun sight which was omitted in the kit and I obviously forgot to represent during the assembly. So model is finished. There has been so much time since I started this project, keeping in mind that I finished the assembly in 2021. And thanks to the channel adventure, I rescued this project from the depth of the workbench. It might seem like the Panzer IV video series is completed, but reality is far from that. I plan to upload the next videos where I include the Panzer IV into some new modeling subjects for me. After all these videos showing the entire process of the Panzer IV painting, I'm really happy with the result. Also, keeping in mind this model was almost entirely built out of the box with some homemade details, I have to say that my feelings about it were not so positive while painting. To be honest, there were some moments when the painting result didn't convince me, but after all, the result has come into a happy modeling ending. As always, I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.